Hello and welcome back to another Monster Monday, a series where I draw a creature from D&D and I talk about its lore and its history and what it's like to fight. In these videos I use your suggestions that you leave down in the comment section below, so make sure to leave a comment of a monster that you'd like to see me draw, but then my patrons over on Patreon get to vote on which monsters they'd like to see me draw in what order. And they have picked the Manticore, first suggested by TK Dean in the YouTube comments. Now the Manticore is one of my all-time favourite creatures in all of mythology, and in truth, I can't honestly tell you why. Prior to making this video, I actually knew next to nothing about it, aside from its physical description. But what a beast this thing is. In D&D, it's a massive lion with a human's face, three rows of barbed teeth, enormous jagged porcupine spikes all over its mane, spine and tail, which it uses to fire at its prey like arrows or darts. It has great bat-like wings. That, and it has a human's face. It's a hugely unsettling image and it's brilliantly captured by the artist in the Monster Manual, who unfortunately I don't know the name of this time. I don't know who painted this image, but it's definitely one of my favorite and one of the creepiest illustrations in the whole book. It just sits in this little nestled cove in the uncanny valley. Making it even creepier, it's also one of the few monstrosities like this that can and will speak common trying to scare or maybe throw off its ideal prey which as it turns out are humans so picture that an enormous lion with a human's face crawling towards you upside down hanging from the ceiling of a cave flexing its bat wings taunting you before it peppers you with spiny missiles from its tail absolutely horrifying Manticores have been a part of Dungeons & Dragons for as long as the game has existed, showing up in the 1974 white box. And although their description stated that they were huge lion-bodied monstrosities with a tail full of spikes that could be fired, their first illustration featured them as winged, just as Manticores in D&D and subsequent games that sort of were influenced by RPGs have done since. I don't know about you, but for me as well, that definitely shaped my understanding of what these creatures looked like, what their appearance was supposed to be, but they're not depicted this way in their mythology. Manticores historically are beasts of Persian legend, whose name was originally Mardichor, M-A-R-D-Y-K-H-O-R, -A -A compound or fusion of the word Mardia, meaning human, and Khor meaning to eat, so literally the man-eater. Early descriptions penned by Greek physician Ctesias, regular source of information on this channel, described creatures who he mispronounced as Martikoras, or in the Greek Androphagos, also meaning man-eaters, when he wrote that he was inclined to think that, the, that it is a tiger, but that has three rows of teeth along each jaw and spikes at the tip of its tail, which it defends itself with at close quarters while it hurls them like archer's arrows at more distant enemies. He believed this to be nothing more than superstition and folklore, but our good friend Pliny the Elder, another veteran of this channel and famous peddler of hideously inaccurate and sensational information, documented this creature as a fact in 77 CE, but mistranslated the name further as Manticoras with a U. And later, medieval scholars ran with this, giving us the word Manticore, which they believed must be a fusion of man and tiger, Mantigur, Manticore, which I believe is why so many illustrations of Manticores, including this one when I'm done with it, will sport something like tiger stripes all over their bodies despite having the body of a lion. We can easily chalk this up to the fact that spelling wasn't standardized back in those days. But nonetheless, none of these descriptions or iterations ever thought to add wings to their horrifying Persian man-eater who's already scary enough with its barbed tail spikes and human face and the body of what medieval scholars thought was a tiger. That is, until I believe, D&D. I couldn't necessarily find a source that plonked wings on the back of these things before Dungeons & Dragons. If you know of one, please make sure to leave that down in the comments below because I would love to see it. But I'm fairly certain D&D is responsible for the whole winged manticore thing. But however it came about, 
I wanted to know why we ended up with a flying horror instead of just its usual grounded self in Persian mythology. If we're going down the D&D is responsible for this route, which we'll have to, I'm inclined to think that one of two things happened. Either A, Gary Gygax mixed a few legends together by accident, as he was one to do. I mentioned this before in my Gorgon Monster Monday, where he mixed up perhaps the Catoblopas and the word Gorgon. Gorgons traditionally being creatures like Medusa who could turn people to stone, the Catoblopas being a bull that would breathe this rancid breath that would kill you and fuse them together in D&D to create a bull whose breath would turn you to stone. So this does happen from time to time. This time, however, potentially, he may have mixed the manticore with the Sumerian and later Persian god called Lamassu, which had the body of a lion or a bull sometimes, the face of a human, and bird wings. You can see where the correlation may have come from there. Same place, same sort of creature, just with large wings on its back, maybe mislabeled in a book that he was reading, who knows. Or perhaps this isn't a mistake, maybe it was intentional and mechanical. Perhaps Gary wanted a kind of evil version of a sphinx. Sphinxes in Greek mythology were often depicted with wings, but weren't necessarily. So maybe he wanted to throw off players who were expecting a sphinx, and when they saw a manticore, he could toy with them a little bit, play with their expectations. Just like a bag of holding and a bag of devouring are very similar and you're supposed to kind of get them mixed up and things. Maybe that's why they have wings in D&D. The only problem there is that the manticore was introduced to D&D three years before the Sphinx was, as it was added in 1977's Monster Manual. Maybe he, as I did before I wrote this video, assumed that manticores were a Greek legend rather than Persian and put them in place of sphinxes, thinking that they'd be rare and deadly to fight, more of a kind of creature that you'd battle rather than something that you would communicate with and solve the riddles of. Who knows? But manticores are great to use in your D&D campaigns. They're a challenge rating 3, lawful evil monstrosity, that are smart enough to talk to you, but not crazy smart. They're intelligence 7, so basically the average human, maybe minus a bit. And they like to form pacts and alliances with those that will allow them a fresh supply of human meat, their favourite food, and they're sort of loosely pack animals as well. They like to work in groups with members of their own species or perhaps others. They can fight alone, they don't mind solitude, but they're most deadly in a pack, or perhaps a pride if they're lions. But unlike most pack animals in D&D, they're usually, you know, sort of challenge rating one quarter or one eighth. They're a challenge rating three, and will group together and work for warlords and goblin hosts and orc legions. So they're a really useful asset to add some interesting flavor to an army that you have already kind of set up and ready to go. They have a 50 foot flying speed and like to start off a fight firing those tail barbs while safely in the air to weaken their prey before they swoop in and attack, before they can allow themselves to be mildly vulnerable. They make three attacks per turn, either two claw attacks, which are d6 plus three, and a bite with its three rows of teeth, which deal 1d8 plus three, or they can shoot three of those tail spikes, which deal 1d8 plus three damage over 100 to 200 feet. Eventually they have to land because although its tail spikes regrow, they only have 24 of them in their arsenal that they can fire that are grown enough to be able to be fireable. And they take time to regenerate. Over time, they need to take a long rest in order to regrow more of these spines. So it's essentially like a little, uh, you know, jet-packed person with... Uh, ammunition count. They're really fun for DMs to use because you can be quite tactical with them, keeping them at a distance, but then they're also very strong in combat as well. Maybe you'll want to put them in a pack or have some other creatures with them, and for those creatures to distract your opponents, distract your players, while this manticore is firing from above, unable to be reached, but might swoop down and attack spellcasters who are unable to reach them, or the ranger perhaps. As they're so historically obsessed with eating humans, it might be a good idea as a DM to roleplay them that they will always go for the humans in the party first. Even if they're being attacked by a halfling or the orc barbarian is launching themselves at it, they, they just can't resist eating human meat, so they'll fly down straight to them. Maybe if they're pack animals, what does the leader of the pack look like? Maybe sometimes these creatures are depicted with large scorpion tails instead of spined tails. That could be an interesting way of distinguishing uh, manticore, I don't know, what would you call it? Like manticore silverbacks, manticore chiefs, manticore kings. 
Maybe they have these large uh, spiked scorpion tails and their barbs from their tails are poisoned. Perhaps they deal extra damage or maybe your players need to pass a constitution saving throw otherwise they succumb to the poison effect for a round or two. Maybe they could pepper a cone with arrows or even an acid spray from their poisonous tail. Who knows? The world is your oyster as a DM. But these are definitely one of the most versatile creatures and definitely great fun to add into the sidelines of an existing threat. They're so creepy with their ability to speak to people and look just slightly like a human. I always imagine them emerging from the darkness and talking to someone before someone shines a light and reveals that there's this enormous lion body behind this creature that they've been conversing with. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I absolutely loved drawing this creature. I had a lot of fun thinking about how it might move. For example, you might notice that its feet there, its back paws, in fact its front ones as well, I tried to make them quite hand-like because I imagine it would need to grip onto stones and rocks and sheer faces. There's something as dexterous as a human hand while still having the kind of little pads and claws of a lion, these large spikes, thick manes, turning into a beard, that kind of thing. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave it a little thumbs up down below. Perhaps favorite this and share it with your party as well in case you're likely to face a manticore soon. If you really love this video and you'd like to see more from me, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon as well to get notified when I make more videos. We're still a growing channel for Manticore Cubs ourselves, so anything that you can do like that really helps the channel to grow. So thank you very much for your kindness if you choose to do that. Remember, if you have a monster that you'd like to see me draw, make sure to leave that in the comments section below and I'll add it to my to draw list. If you'd like a print of this drawing, if you loved it so much that you'd like a copy for yourself, make sure to look at the little banner down below. You should see my merchandise store where I sell prints of all my Monster Mondays. But if you'd like a copy of every drawing that I do each month, you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way, and you'd like to vote on which monsters I get to draw each month, as well as getting things like one-on-one -on -one chats, extra videos, and behind the scenes kind of stuff, make sure to head over to my Patreon page, where if you are kind enough to tip me the price of a cup of coffee, you still really help me to make all of these videos. So thank you very, very much for that. Otherwise, always make sure there's a human in the party to distract the local manticore, and happy monster hunting.